All right, here's another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're going to do some silver brazing. We've got to silver braze some copper washers to some stainless steel bolts, and also we're going to braze a carbon steel swivel foot to a little block of copper. Now, silver brazing sometimes can be stronger than welding, and sometimes it's the way to go when you've got a lot of uh, contact area that you can flow silver braze material into or you got areas where really you don't have room for a weld like on this job uh, maybe the customer doesn't want to fill it weld around the edge and plus you've got all that faying surface in between where you can flow braze material and make a really really strong joint plus in this particular case the uh, the specification blueprint just called for uh, silver braze so that's what we're going to do I'm using a little homemade third hand thing here to hold it down just uh, you can make those out of anything that have some weight to them. Bend a little gooseneck out of some uh, round stock with a sharpened point on it. It's real handy for holding things. All right, again, I've got to braze this uh, copper washer to the head of this stainless steel bolt. And uh, the way I'm going to do that, I have seen some demonstrations at welding shows of induction heating and induction brazing. And what's really cool is it it uses a pre-placed ring of braze material and uh, with electromagnetic uh, induction heats up the area really evenly and watch this how quickly and evenly it just melts it and flows that braze material into that into that collar joint so with that in mind oh, before, before I get to that I'm going to show you this other they also had handheld uh, induction heating uh, tools. This one's hooked up to an inverter power source and watch how quickly it heats up this round stock. Nothing flat, evenly heats it up, even underwater. I don't know when you'd ever want to do that, but it sure makes a, a good gee whiz, whiz bang demonstration for a salesman at a, at a welding show. So again, watch this where he heats it up. Gonna let it cool a little bit here and then nothing flat. The whole thing just heats up. Heats up cherry red again. Crazy. But the way that applies in brazing is it heats it up evenly instead of with a torch where you're using localized heating. You heat everything up evenly and you get a better joint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend some pre-placed filler metal here. Now I'm using a something comparable to a uh, Easy Flow uh, 35 or something like that from Harris. In this particular case, I'm not even sure what it was. It's just some silver braze that was unidentified, but I've used it before and I know it it melts at roughly 11 or 1200 degrees and it it works good with the white. Harris Stay Silve Flux. So uh, for this application, I know it's not food service or anything. I'm not worried about cadmium. That is a concern for health reasons as well as you can't use cadmium for any food service products. But um, this is just uh, just needs to be held in place, and uh, silver brazing is the way to go. So I bent some pre-placed pieces of filler metal. Just get them close. I don't even have to touch on the end or anything. And I'm gonna I'm going to uh, fit everything together like this and then flux everything up and then what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to heat from the bottom instead of from the top and everything should go similar to that uh, induction uh, brazing demonstration I showed a minute ago. Now that I've got it on there and see everything's going to be uh, pretty close and fit together I need to flux everything up really good. So I noticed when I opened my can of flux that it was dry as a bone and crackly so I had to take a break here for a minute, add some water to that, stir it up real good, and make a nice paste out of it. But that's that's pretty typical. If you don't use your flux very often, it dries up, and you can just add water. Usually, it it winds up working fine anyway. And this is kind of like you know finger painting when you were a kid. Uh, no one ever accused me, even as far back as kindergarten, of being a neat freak. So this doesn't bother me at all. Just paste it. I like too much flux rather than not enough. And I rub it on real good and get plenty on there. And then I'm going to put some on the filler metal also. And uh, because of too much flux will usually not give you a problem except that filler metal will run wherever there is flux. If, you, if you're too messy with it, it just goes, every, if you're trying to limit where, where the silver runs to, you might want to be careful not to flux everything up. But I'm going to put an extra extra gob on the uh, on that filler metal itself, so I don't make sure and oxidize it and get it all heated up. So just a big a big chunk on here on an acid brush and uh, get it going nice and good all on that copper. And also on this little swivel foot, this is a carbon steel swivel foot. It had some zinc coating on it. We skinned that off because we don't want any extra problems. I'm going to bend one for that too. And uh, this is going to a copper block with a little recessed area in it and. Uh, I know that copper is going to take a lot more heat to heat up than that piece of carbon steel. So that's why I'm bending a ring here of filler metal. That way I can come from underneath with a torch, heat everything up nice and evenly, and just let that whole ring 
flow and wet in to that uh, joint all at once instead of trying to feed it in like a you know by hand with a braze rod. You could do it that way also, but I'm just I'm just trying to duplicate that little demonstration I saw at a welding show one time. I thought it might be cool and see how that works. So get this all in place again with the pre-placed uh, ring. Now, I didn't get this one that close, but that's going to be plenty of filler metal to do the job. So a little extra flux on the uh, filler metal and all all around where I don't want it to scale. I want it to protect it and keep it keep that carbon steel from scaling. Plenty of flux. And then, you know, the only thing I had to use that, uh, for this demonstration, the only thing that was at the shop that day was a cutting torch. So... So we're going to try to duplicate that little uh, demonstration with that induction heating with a cutting torch and a bent ring of filler metal on the top. And we're going to heat it from the bottom and we're going to hope to wick it in just like this did. So with everything all fluxed up, all messy, I'm going to run that torch up underneath that copper because that's where the heat is going to be uh, dissipated most quickly. And I'm just going to take my time heating that copper up first and when that copper is hot I know it's going to conduct heat pretty well into that carbon steel so I'm focusing on the copper first and I speed it up a little bit here so you don't have to watch all day and a minute you can start to see that flux start to do its scouring action uh, start to uh, get kind of bright different color under under where the flux gets all clear and everything and then I make sure to throw a little heat on that carbon because uh, it's going to need a little bit. Now you can watch that piece of that piece of braze material. It's about, it's getting ready to melt. And there it goes. So it worked. Melted in there just about like that braze all at once. Flowed right in that joint. And I throw a little heat up top here to make sure it make sure it takes. And you can see that collar of braze material around there, wet, making a nice nice fillet, nice collar. That's what we want. Now for the for the uh, for the copper washer, same kind of thing. We, I've just hung it upside down here so I could come underneath with a nice soft flame that wraps around everything pretty good. And again, I'm going to speed this up a little bit too. And you can watch the flux start to react and start to boil and, and uh, get close to, uh, to reacting temperature. All right, here we go. Copper is starting to get a little bit hot. Bottom of that bolt head starting to get hot. I threw a little bit. Of, got to throw a bit, a little bit of heat up top too to make sure everything's even. Now you can see the. Uh, the bent ring of uh, silver braze material, and in a minute, when things get all all warmed up and all almost pink, you're going to watch it wick in, and there it goes. So a lot of it ran out onto that copper. Enough of it ran into the joint too, and I'm going to come up top and and uh, heat up that bolt a little bit, to make sure everything everything's hot enough to to bond, and and watch the collar around that around that uh, between the bolt and that. And the copper washer, make sure there's make sure it's good and wet looking in there and get that up a little, just barely pink. And then there we go. We know we got plenty of silver braze material flowed down into that joint. So it works. If you got something round or uh you can you can cut pre cut the material, the braze material and place it. Sometimes it's better. You see that collar that flowed all the way through to the head, you know it's good then. And there's a nice little fillet around the swivel pad. So thanks for watching. Visit weldingtipsandtricks.com.